Hi guys, uh, I wanted to post a follow-up video to the previous one about how to use Celery. Uh, this time doing a little bit more of an interesting task than last time. Last time where we just added two numbers together and threw away the result. We're going to fetch a URL and not throw away the result, but rather store it in a database. So like last time, we need to come up with a task. We'll call it fetch URL. It'll take a URL. And for simplicity's sake, let's use the requests library to make an HTTP get request to the URL uh, and just store the status code that results from making that request. Um, like last time, we'll need to create a Celery instance. We'll call it app. Um, but unlike last time, we'll create a config file where we'll define uh, some configuration variables, which include the fact that we want to use a database as a results backend, so to store the results of our task in a database. And that database should be SQLite, uh, a, a file-back database. Uh, you could really have use whatever you want. It doesn't even need to be a database backend. It could be Celery, or sorry, it could be Redis or RabbitMQ. Uh, but to load that config file or those config variables, the other thing is we need to apply our task decorator. Other than that, we should be good to go. Um, we can take a look at that for a sec, because I'm going to close it. Um, like last time, celery worker a then where our task definitions are. And we'll set the log level to be pretty verbose. Uh, like last time, ignore the warning up here. This is just about um, the serialization technique for uh, pushing tasks and, and deserializing tasks from Rabbit, which I have running in this other tab. Uh, but otherwise, let's open IPython. Uh, we'll define an empty list of tasks. Uh, we'll also, from tasks, import our, our task definition. Uh, but for each URL in our text file, uh, we will push an item onto our queue, which entails calling delay on our task. Uh, so Importantly, in our text file, we don't have protocol, which is something that you need to specify with the requests library. And we also have new line characters that we need to st uh, strip off. Sorry. Uh, but other than that, we should be good to push a bunch of tasks onto the queue. You can see that it's happened over there. You can see that the length of tasks is 1,000. Uh, this will actually take a while. It will take a lo longer than this. I'm going to allow this video to go on for. Uh, but one thing you can do is, or we can do, is go to our file or our directory, and you can see that there's now a temp.db file. If we open it with SQLite and look at what tables there are, there's a celery task meta. So this is the table where the results of our tasks are getting stored by celery over here. Um, we don't need to peek at it right now because the contents of it are actually stored as blobs rather than texts, text values or int values. Uh, so really, the most convenient way to get at the results of our um, tasks are to actually try and get them uh, from our tasks list. So you can see that each item in our tasks list is an async result. And async results allow you to call get on them. And that should retrieve the value that's been written to the database that has resulted from the task. So another thing that they, another method that results or async results have is you can see whether the result is done, whether it's ready or accessible. So for each task, um, we can try getting it. And we also want to ignore errors like we, you may have been seeing in the other window over here um, for task and tasks, if task.ready. So this should be a list of all the tasks that are done. So we can check the length of that list. It's about 156, so we're only about 15% 15 per, 15 of the way there. Um, but more interestingly, you can, we can use the collections library or the counter class from the collections library. And we can look at what the distribution of status codes are that we're getting back. You can see that, well, let's get them in pretty, pretty, pretty printed. Um, 
So that what this is doing is it's getting results from the SQLite database and then showing us a count of how many uh, occurrences of each value there was. So you can see that we're getting some exceptions and those are getting stored to the database. But we're also getting 200 responses, some 400 level responses, which include 404s and 403s. Uh, but by and large, we're getting what we wanted. Um, so that's really all I had in mind for this demo. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments. I'll be, pre I'll be pretty responsive or try to be. The interesting stuff is really in here. You really don't need to use Celery's uh, uh, backend configuration that we created in the config file. Uh, you can really do your database insertions or your, your side effects of your tasks in the body of your task definition. Uh, but I just wanted to show you some of the functionality of Celery. Hope that helps. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.